In this video you will learn how not to breath harmful fumes when using a 3D resin printer. It's robust. Cool. Controllable. Safe. And virtually convenient. So, let's have a closer look at the enclosure. The front side has three doors, which are to maintain suction when opened separately. Suction is maintained even with open doors. On the right side, there is a window of transparent plastic protected by an opaque door. Here you can also see three switches to control the fan and two internal lights. At the bottom of the back side, there are two ventilation intake openings. The left side is the one where a temperature indicator and a lamp holder are mounted. Now let's see what's inside. The funnel holder, printer cover holder, and camera guidance holder, temperature sensor, and two lamps. Let's discuss the internals in more detail. Here is one of the two lamps mentioned earlier. It has a flexible holder fixed on the outer surface of the enclosure. This is the temperature sensor connected to the indicator. It can be placed almost anywhere inside the box. The smaller exhaust fan to help cooling the printer's electronics. With the upper one I can watch and record the process itself. The lower one provides the view of the touch screen and is also recordable. The upper camera is rail mounted and can be adjusted vertically and along its horizontal axis depending on my preferences. Before we get to the ventilation system I'll show you some more useful features, such as the observation window, the cover holder, and air intake openings. For the window and door I used parts of a broken LCD screen, and a magnet. The brown and white horizontal parts comprise a holder for the printer cover. With the holder, it is easy to store and ventilate the cover when removed from the printer. Now, the ventilation system. No smell, no fumes, no vapor. These plastic parts, including the fan, are very cheap and easy to install and connect.
This fan is the final point from which the exhausted fumes are vented to the outside through a flexible pipe. So the entire enclosure has been built using a hot glue gun, some screws, and a sharp knife. This opening is for manual operation of the printer, such as selecting a file to print, stopping the printer, cam to PC USB connectors. hinges, two small screws and a drop of super glue for each hinge. Now it's time to place the printer into the enclosure. The enclosure will be separated into two parts. The upper part is where the fumes are. The lower part is where the printer's cooling fan operates. The special horizontal partition will separate the warm, upper, and the cool, bottom, parts of the enclosure. This is the horizontal partition made of a thin carton box. It has an opening cut in the center so the partition tightly fits onto the printer body. The limits of the partition are provided with a barrier to contain resin in case of a spill. The barrier is hot glued. The foil will prevent leaks between the printer body and the partition to protect the external surfaces of the body as well as the touch screen. I switch on the lights and proceed with the final operation to get ready for printing, so outside or inside the printer cover. Finally, I install the funnel with bottle to empty the vat after I finish printing.
I switch the lights off. I can use the lamp as I like to provide more light where I need it. And the last important thing. Suction. Let's check it. I switch the fan and close the doors. A gap between the doors must be there. The upper door is now almost free to move. The suction is noticeable, and as I switch off the exhaust fan the door returns to its free position.